So let's start with this uh, jazz showcase that you have uh, put together. And it, this is a great time, I feel like, to talk about it because I have to say that this is the time of year uh, that, that we all think of music a little more than other times of the year. And of course, uh, I have been thinking this year for some reason uh, about your late husband, Marcus, uh, and the, the talent and inspiration and voice he brought to music. Uh, I think this is a year when we're thinking about loss more than, than other times. And so he's been on my mind a bit. Um, uh, well, you know, there's an old saying that is, as long as there's someone thinking about you, remembering you, you will never be gone. Yeah, right. That's so absolutely. I appreciate the fact that, that you're keeping him in your mind and in your thoughts. Yeah. So, so tell us about this showcase. From Detroit to the World is what it was entitled. Um, I, I, I started out, um, there's this yearly event in New York. Okay, first of all, when Marcus passed, I went to New York to uh, stay with my daughter. Uh, she had twins. Um, and so, yeah, right. And I ended up spending uh, three years there, uh, wow. helping her with the babies, living in Harlem. And um, during the time, they have this thing called APAP. It's a showcase every year that they have. Um, and all of the um, presenters from all over the world, including the ones from Michigan, so the folks from the DIA and the UMS and everyone, they all um, converge at the, this hotel, Hilton Hotel in New York. And all of the different acts that are available perform starting at like, I think 10 or 11 o'clock and going until midnight. Every half hour, there's a different act. And um, that's how people get booked, you know? And I, so I went to the, to the APAP and I thought, there was no Detroit acts here, you know? And I thought, you know, we could do this. You know, we could, uh, you know, we've got 
an abundance of talent that needs to be um, brought out to the world because, you know, Detroit is, is wealthy in, in all kinds of artistic talent. Mm -hmm. So I produced it. I took about, there were about 25 people on the show. Um, we had uh, four different sets. We had, it was called From Detroit to the World. It was sold out. I opened the set with Mark Stryker, who did a, a talk about his book, um, Jazz from Detroit. And we did a panel discussion about Marcus and not just Marcus, but just the, the plethora of jazz musicians that have come from Detroit. And a lot of people don't realize how many are from Detroit. I remember Winton said something to me. He said, dang, does everybody come from Detroit? But you know, you think about, you don't think about it. You just hear them. And then the next thing you know, you under, you find that they were from Detroit. So Mark Stryker opened it with a talk. And then the first set was my set. I did a set with my group. The second set was the Marcus Legacy Ensemble now, which is comprised of, I just picked a few of his, his, um, his students, quote unquote, people that he mentored. So we had Robert Hurst, we had uh, Ali Jackson, we had Kareem Riggins, we had um, um, Kelvin Scholler, we had Theo Croker on trumpet, Dwight Adams on trumpet. Um, and who was the other trumpeter? Oh, Greg Glassman on trumpet, who studied with Marcus in um, Oberlin. And so that was the, the second set. The third set was the jazz, I call it the NEA Detroit Jazz Master set. So we had, I had Sheila Jordan, Ron Carter, Lewis Hayes, and Johnny O'Neill. And the last set, I called it Taking It Forward. And so it was Marcus's protégés, wow. but playing their music their way, showing the history of what, what's to come. Marcus leaves such an incredible legacy. I mean, uh, yep. it's hard to even fathom how many young and now even middle-aged musicians uh, he, he, he touched and, yep. and really pushed to, to, to become who they are. Uh, and and that's, that's Detroit, you know? I mean, that, that, that says a lot about what Detroit is. I mean, you go to other places and you have these um, competitions between musicians, you know, the older musicians, and a lot of times they don't like the younger musicians because they say the young musicians are taking their jobs and da 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 da. But you don't have that in Detroit. You know, you have you have a sense where people are welcomed with open arms and, you know, made to do better. So yeah. And and that's basically what happened, you know. And and, and I wanted to showcase that. I wanted to I wanted people to see the culture in Detroit, you know, how 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 it worked how um and how it's ours i mean it's not how it's ours and, and and it's it's so different i mean you know every new orleans has its its culture new york has its culture you know i get that but detroit is a little di di little bit different than than everybody else because of you know our, our interest is the music you know and the legacy and and we don't see we're not threatened by you know younger people coming up we put them on the stand with us, you know, and say, okay, this is how you, because that's where you learn. You know, you can go to school and go in the classroom, but what you learn is on the bandstand. Band, right. Yeah. 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 Talk a little about uh, the disruption that the pandemic has, uh, has meant for artists, uh, and musicians in, in, in particular, and, and, and how you're doing. My main concern right now is keeping everybody safe, you know. Um, uh, the music will survive, you know, I know it's hard uh, not to be out there practicing your craft, especially for like horn players, you know, because their chops get yeah. weak if they're not out. I mean, because it's one thing to practice, it's another thing to play with someone and, you know, the call and response and all that, it's just harder. I get that. But I think from what I'm hearing from most people, you know, we're just trying to stay safe. We're trying to get through this so that, so that, we'll be here. You know, we've lost so many. We've lost so many in the world. I mean, just just a couple of days ago, Charlie Pride, you know, and, and I, I was sitting there thinking, who let Charlie Pride get on the stage? <laughs> you know, I mean, that was my main thing. I mean, I get it. He got a, um, you know, he got a, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And all, but why couldn't he have done that virtually yeah. and still been here with us? Yeah. You know? yeah. So, I mean, you know, you see, I'm in the studio at home. You know, I think a lot of us are, are, are writing, you know, 
cre still being creative, creating a material however we can, um, but, but staying safe, you know, sending, um, you know, well, who was it? Was it Patti LaBelle and Michael McDonald, the song that they did on my own? Not until later did we know that they had never even met each other. Right. You know? I mean, that was a huge hit. And, and, you know, you could, you hear it and you could just feel the, 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 the uh, chemistry between the two of them. There was no chemistry. They never met. So for me, I'm used to being around people. I'm used to feeding off of the energy of the musicians and, and, and the audience and all of that. So it's something that we have to get used to, but you know, just like everything else, it's short lived. You know, we'll get through this if we all just be patient. And it, it's so hard. I mean, I get it. We've been cooped up almost a whole year, you know. But I think if we just stay the course and just be patient and still wear our masks, you know, wash our hands. You know, I didn't get to see my children over the holiday and I'm not going to see them for Christmas. And, you know, I've got beautiful little grandbabies that, <laughs> you know, that I miss. But it's going to be okay because come spring and summer, I'm hoping, praying that we'll be out of this.